In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we recaptured 42 G's, baby. Also, I'll be sharing a prediction from crypto analyst Mikhail Vende Pop that Bitcoin's going to 300 to 500 thousand dollars per coin. Also, quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, Britain doesn't deserve Bitcoin, not under five million dollars. Certainly, three U.S. listed companies have market caps greater than Britain's GDP. It really is a smarmy little rat invested island. <laughs> the world world would be better off without very powerful words there. <laughs> Tesla missed out on 300 million profit after Bitcoin sales. I'll also be sharing this as they release their, uh, their records, of course. And also 867 million erased as Grayscale's GBTC experiences record 20,800 Bitcoin reduction in 24 hours. We're also going to be discussing Bitcoin ETFs are wrapped in thin layer of indirect regulations, according to the CFTC chair. Also, the latest with Craig Wright offers settlement in the disputed Bitcoin creator case. I'll also be sharing some insider insights from Max Kaiser with Craig Wright and this other guy being Lee Harvey Oswald, a patsy. That's right. We'll also be discussing BlackRock's iBit Bitcoin ETF crosses $2 billion in market cap. Pretty serious. Also, Peter Schiff, the notorious Bitcoin troll, says Bitcoin can hit $10 million per coin if this happens. I'll be breaking down this scenario for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more, in today's show. If you're new to the channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. Also important to smash the likes to help pump the stream. It's greatly appreciated as it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Also hit the bell icon, turn on all notifications. That way you get notified each and every day as I go live, as this is a live show, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. As much as humanly possible, I love to stream and share with the fam. Today is pod episode number 1535. I'm your host, JV, and today is January 27th, 2024. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. We got Bitcoin back in the green, baby, uh, maintaining above over 42 Gs, up 0.3% on the daily. We also have Ether up a quarter percent, maintaining just above 2,200, while BNB, Solana, XRP, Cardano, AVAX, and all the top coins are back in the green. Let's go. And zooming out, on, oh man, and it always defaulting to the hourly. So let me look at the daily, my bad. This is the daily. So Bitcoin, the, the prices don't change, but Bitcoin is actually down now a quarter of a percent on the daily. And if we zoom out on the monthly, uh, it shows the same. Uh, Bitcoin still barely in the red. Some are in the green, but pretty sideways trading action uh, for the past month, according to Coin360. And check it out, coinmarketcap.com. The crypto market cap sits at $1.62 trillion, with $35 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance back on the climb at 50.8%, with the Ether dominance, which has dropped off some in the past few days, currently at 16.9%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, we got Ronin leading the pack, up 17%, followed by Manta, followed by Helium, Sats, Astar, Beam, and the scam token of Sam Bankman Freed, FTT. Now, which altcoins, if any, are you most bullish on for this bull run 2024, 2025? Holla at your boy. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective on the daily. You can see roughly 90% of the alts in the green and pump in with some pretty impressive gainers up 10%. Like, uh, you know, uh, we got Tau, Manta's up 11%, and also Ron up 17%. And zooming out on the monthly, here's where we have a mixed bag. I'd say probably predominantly corrected, roughly 60% of the alts in the red, 40% in the green. But the ones in the green do have impressive gains on the monthly, including Hex, Ehex, Sue, Celestia, Say and PLS, Astar, and ICP. And uh, checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're currently rated a 55 in greed. Yesterday, 49 neutral. Last week, a 52 neutral. And uh, last month, a 73 in greed. And checking out the Bitcoin having clock, we're only 81 days away until the most epic experience in your life, which is set to take place on April 18, 2024, which is the Bitcoin halving. So you already know that's less than three months out. If you're pretty stoked for the Bitcoin having this year, 
Holla at your boy. Shout out to everyone in the live chat. Keep the comments a coming, but let's now kick it off with our Bitcoin technical analysis, aka astrology for men. Check out the charts where the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next. Bitcoin's price has broken through 42 thousand for the first time in nearly seven days. As the market recovers from the aftermath of the spot Bitcoin ETF, links sell off. Data from TradingView shows Bitcoin climb rapidly from 39.5, January 26, which is the low, gaining 5% to trade at now roughly 42,000. As you can see here in the Bitcoin daily chart, Bitcoin's performance comes as the market experiences a slowdown in outflows for Grayscale's uh, spot Bitcoin ETF. Data from BitMEX research shows GBTC saw massive outflows of 394.1 million on January 25th, down from 429 mil on January 24th, and 515 mil on Tuesday, January 23rd. And while the GBTC outflows remain very high, the January 25th figure marked the second lowest since spot Bitcoin ETF trading debuted on January 11th. As BitMEX shares here, the Bitcoin spot ETF flow day 10 data out for all the providers, 80 million net outflow for day 10. And senior Bloomberg ETF analyst James Safart posted a chart on X showing premiums and discounts for the Bitcoin ETFs compressing over the last 10 days, to which fellow analyst Eric Belchunas responded by saying, it's a beautiful site. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that. An independent market analyst, Yakuza, said Bitcoin has successfully set a trap for the bears. That's right, it's hunting season family, who were hoping to catch the price at 32,000 and added late shorts already liquidated or about to, quoting him here, Bitcoin trap successfully set, late shorts already liquidated or about to, never go against the mafia, obey and follow to be profitable, whatever the market condition is. Now, in line with his observation, CoinGlass shows short position liquidations for Bitcoin top in 40, or I'm sorry, 34 million on the day, with the tally expected to increase before the close of the day. Cross crypto short liquidations amounted for more than 77 million dollars. And quoting a uh, crypto analyst, Mikhail Vende Pop, Bitcoin is likely consolidating from here between 37 to 30, uh, between 37 and 48,000 for the coming months. In this period, the altcoins will have their time. The real impact on the ETF is going to come in the next few years, resulting into a price of Bitcoin going to 300 to 500 thousand dollars per coin, as he outlines here in this chart. So let me know if you feel over the next few months, we're gonna be ranging between 37 to 48,000 before eventually having a massive breakout to that three to $500,000 per coin price action. Holla at your boy, and shout out to Macau Van Day Pop. And uh, quoting the high priest Bitcoin off the back of this news, the Bank of England says no final decision has been made on Britcoin. And uh, Max responded, Britain doesn't deserve Bitcoin, not under 5 million per coin, certainly. Three US listed companies have market caps greater than Britain's GDP. It really is a smarmy little rat infested island the world would be better off without. Very bold words coming from the high priest. Anyways, family, let's dive into our next story of the day and discuss Tesla. They revealed their balance sheet, and here's an interesting fact. Tesla missed out on $300 million worth of profit after their Bitcoin sales. That's right. Tesla's refusal a refusal, a refusal to hodl Bitcoin resulted in a missed opportunity worth over 300 mil. Tesla's initial foray into Bitcoin began February 2021 with a groundbreaking one and a half billion investment. At the time, Bitcoin was roughly 36 G's. And since the first reported Bitcoin balance on February 8th of 2021, Tesla stock price is now down roughly 40% against Bitcoin. Specifically, Tesla versus Bitcoin, negative 40%. Bitcoin versus USD, up 7%, and Tesla versus USD down 35%. Percent. So, and here's a chart to reflect all of that. However, in a surprising turn, Tesla sold about 10% of its holdings in March of 2021. Then in the second quarter of 2022, Tesla sold approximately 75% of its Bitcoin reserves. That's a pretty major dump off. And as Tesla CEO's Elon noted, these sales intended to demonstrate Bitcoin's liquidity and to bolster Tesla's balance sheet during uncertain financial periods. And had Tesla retained its entire Bitcoin investment, the company would have a hypothetical profit of over $300 million, considering the current Bitcoin value of approximately 41000 
500. Nonetheless, the company's remaining Bitcoin holdings, estimated at around 9,720 BTC, have remained steady in recent quarters, reflecting a more conservative approach in what traders anticipate to be a very bullish year for the king crypto. And uh, you can see Tesla still holds 9,720 Bitcoin worth 385 mil and did not sell any more in quarter four of 2023, according to their latest filings. And interestingly, uh, previous Bitcoin Tesla sales appeared in the quarters reporting weaker free cash flows. It is the cash that a company generates after spending the money required to maintain or grow its business operations. For example, in the first quarter of 2021, the Tesla sale of Bitcoin valued at $272 million constituted a staggering 93% of the company's free cash flows during that period. And similarly, in the second quarter of 2022, Tesla's 73% reduction in the free cash flows coincided with its Bitcoin sales. So in simple words, Elon relied on Bitcoin to bolster finances during Tesla's tighter cash periods. He may not need to employ the same strategy now, however, given Tesla's increasing free cash flows throughout 2023. And in quarter four of 2023, for example, Tesla's free cash flow was strong at 2.1 billion, contributing to a total 4.4 billion for the year. As all outlined here, you can see Tesla's quarter four uh, revenue up 3%, you know, gross margins, operating margins, and all that uh, data. Numerous analysts forecast a rise of Bitcoin's value. Of course, we have a Bitcoin halving uh, scheduled 82 days out, and you already know what's income and family. So there you have it. What are your thoughts on Elon embracing Bitcoin in the beginning? Purchasing one and a half billion worth, then dumping 75% of their stash. Do you think that was all by design? Do you think Elon is bullish on Bitcoin? Or do you think he can care less because he's already on paper the richest man on the planet? Let me know your thoughts, family. But anyways, next story of the day. Let's dive in. Let's discuss GBTC. Uh, the headline reads, 867 million erased. Grayscale's GBTC experiences a record 20,803 Bitcoin reduction in 24 hours. Whoa. Grayscale's GBTC holds a position of 502,000 Bitcoin in its reserves. And what's crazy is uh, a couple of weeks ago, before this ETF, they held 620,000. So they've dumped a lot. So this is currently valued at 21 billion. And this figure reflects a reduction of 20,800 Bitcoin from its holding just on Friday morning, which then amounted to 523,516 BTC. And uh, am I sharing my screen right now? You should be able to see my screen. Let me know. Since January 12, 2024, GBTC's Bitcoin holdings have decreased by 114,000 Bitcoin, equivalent to almost $5 billion based on the Bitcoin exchange rates as of January 27th. The fund has also seen substantial trade activity dominating the market on Friday with 659 million out of the 100, or I'm sorry, 1.68 billion total trade volume across all 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs. GBTC led the market in all 11 trading sessions since the launch of the 10 new spot ETFs. It's its highest trading volume was recorded January 11th, reaching $2.29 billion, while its lowest was on January 25th with a volume of $501 million. To date, these 10 ETFs have accumulated a total trading volume of $25 billion, with GBTC's transactions contributing $16 billion, accounting for 63% of the total since January 11th of this year. So despite competition from new entrants like BlackRock and Fidelity, Grayscale's trust remains the largest Bitcoin holding fund that can Canadian Purpose ETF, BTCC, holds 33,000 BTC as of January 27th, and the ETC Group Physical Bitcoin Fund, traded on Germany's Frankfurt, holds 24,856 BTC as of January 25th. So even with the presence of these international ETFs and smaller U.S. counterparts like iBit and FBTC, Grayscale's trust still surpasses all of them in size. Now, the mass accumulation of Bitcoin continues in the ETF market. You got BlackRock and Fidelity leading the pack. And of course, we've had GBTC product as the largest holder of Bitcoin even before the ETFs were launched. So those are pretty much the three biggest out there. And it's shocking how much Bitcoin they have already amassed through the ETFs. And they're just getting started. They just launched a few weeks ago. So it's about to get real, if you know what I mean. Let's now discuss the ETFs regarding to the CFTC chairman. That's right. Here we go. The chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, known as the CFTC, Rostin Benham, believes there is a risk uh, to the recent approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, which will be misinterpreted as 
firm regulations in place for Bitcoin and other cryptos in general. In a keynote speech January 26 yesterday, he clarified there is a potential for retail and institutional investors to misunderstand the legal ruling for the spot Bitcoin ETFs following the United States SEC decision to approve the 11 apps January 10th. And while the approval now allows investors to expose themselves to Bitcoin without directly holding the asset itself, supervised by the SEC, regulated stock exchange, he argued there is no regulatory oversight for the cash market of digital assets, such as a crypto exchange, quoting him here, there remains nothing firmly in place to address the opaque and inconsistent practices in the cash markets for digital assets. Furthermore, he explained that this has repercussions for the transparency of Bitcoin ETFs since asset management firms acquire the underlying asset for the ETF from the cash market. He raised concerns regarding trade settlement, conflicts of interest, data reporting, cybersecurity, customer protection, transparency, and general market integrity. Quoting him again, the ETPs, which are exchange-traded products, have taken a speculative and volatile asset, wrapped it in a thin layer of indirect regulation, and packaged it as a shiny new product. And the enforcement of crypto regulations has been a prominent topic of discussion within the U.S. government recently, prompted by the demand for the crypto for, from the crypto industry. In September 2023, as reported, the CFTC commissioner, Caroline Pham, advocated for a limited pilot program to address crypto regulation and warned that the U.S. may soon need to play catch up to the crypto-friendly jurisdictions. She suggested that the program would be similar to regulatory sandboxes previously introduced at the state level. However, many in the crypto industry anticipate that there could be increased regulatory clarity following the U.S. presidential election in November. And my question for you guys, who do you think will win that presidential election this year? And in a recent survey on January 2nd by the Crypto Council for Innovation indicated that the most crypto focused individuals stated that a candidate's position on digital assets would be somewhat very or extremely important to their vote. What are your thoughts? Would you vote for someone against Bitcoin? Uh, Do you not vote? Or would you only vote for someone pro Bitcoin? I'd love to know your sentiment on that. But let's dive into our next story of the day and discuss the latest with fake Toshi and uh, ultimately Craig Wright. Here's the latest update. The headline reads, Craig Wright offers settlement and disputed Bitcoin creator case. And a few days ago, we focused heavily on fake Toshi and I shared some insights. Max Kaiser says that Craig Wright is Calvin's Lee Harvey Oswald, a patsy. And y'all know Lee Harvey Oswald was the one they blamed for assassinating uh, JFK. But we all know that it wasn't him. He was just set up and framed. And I think that's common knowledge nowadays. Now, Kyle wrote the exact moment when Calvin and Judas found the perfect patsy. So here you go. Craig Wright in the middle, toasting some wine along with Roger Veer and this guy, Calvin. Now, allegedly, according to the high priest and many others, this guy, Calvin, is the one pulling the strings. And uh, this Craig Wright guy pretending to be uh, Satoshi is ultimately the patsy. Now, what's interesting, even more so, is... What's the odds of these three gentlemen together where Roger Veer clearly forked the network with Bitcoin cash? And then we had uh, this guy in the middle, uh, fake Toshi, fork with Satoshi Vision and both claim to be the real Bitcoin. You know what I mean? So was this like a government engineered attack against Bitcoin? Well, You decide, but let me read the latest. Craig Wright, the self-proclaimed inventor of Bitcoin, has made a public non-negotiable settlement offer to the Open Crypto Patent Alliance, Coinbase, Kraken, and the Bitcoin core developers ahead of the heated legal battle concerning the true identity of Satoshi Nakamoto, synonymous creator of Bitcoin. In October 2023, Wright submitted new evidence, which he alleged supported his claim, including a Bitcoin white paper and a 2007 computer time capsule. However, a revelation emerged from expert witnesses for both Copa and Wright, who agreed that these documents were recent forgeries. Well, go figure. They weren't real documents. Who would have thunk? (laughs) Now, both parties' forensic experts concluded the Bitcoin white paper purportedly written in latex was actually produced in open office and could have not been created before 2009. And similarly, the time capsule file claimed to be from 2007 showed evidence of editing in September of 2023 busted, undermining Wright's assertions. And additionally, a deleted file suggests the use of ChatGBT in fabricating part of the evidence. 
busted again. And with the trial set to commence February 5th, wow, that's next week, Wright proposed a settlement that could end multiple lawsuits involving COPA. Why do you think he's looking to settle? Because he's been busted for his fraud. Coinbase Kraken and the Bitcoin Core, the offer stipulates that these entities acknowledge Bitcoin's original purpose as outlined in the white paper, sees claims of representing the original Bitcoin and ensure Bitcoin's use for the benefit of humanity and in compliance with the laws against illicit activity. In return, Wright agrees not to pursue claims related to his database rights and copyrights in the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and ABC blockchains. Wright's proposal, detailed in a post on his blog, emphasized his desire to refocus on family <laughs> and development of blockchain tech, particularly Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. He reiterated his commitment to the original principles of Bitcoin and expressed his intention to foster a competitive market where intellectual property rights are respected. This offer, made just weeks before the trial, could be seen as a strategic move by Wright, signaling lack of confidence in his evidence. Uh, duh. However, the acceptance of the settlement by Copa other parties seems unlikely. Uh, quoting Copa here, hard pass on that settlement. Just like Craig Wright forges documents and doesn't quite tell the truth, his description of the settlement offer isn't quite accurate either. It comes with loopholes and would allow him to sue people all over again. So there you have it, my crypto fam. What are your thoughts on this fake Toshi and all of that's happening? Do you feel that this was all an orchestrated attack against Bitcoin? Now, another interesting fact I broke down in great detail a few days ago, this guy Calvin on the left, he actually got busted for fraud and got charged with some serious charges by the you know US government for doing something with a illegal gambling operation, like an illegal gambling website. And then all of the charges mysteriously got dropped. And then, you know, who knows? I'm not going to speculate any further, but why do you think that all occurred? Do you think that this was all an orchestrated or engineered attack colluding with the United States government? Or do you think it's all just a big coincidence? Let me know your thoughts, family, in the comments right down below. BlackRock's iBit Bitcoin ETF crosses $2 billion market cap. Um, James Safart says, yes, the Bitcoin price has pushed iBit's assets beyond $2 billion. This plus likely new flows today should mean it will be above $2 billion at close. And lo and behold, we did uh, surpass uh, $2 billion. But anyways, family, now for our feature story of the day. Peter Schiff, the notorious Bitcoin critic, aka Bitcoin troll, says there is a scenario, he believes, where Bitcoin can hit $10 million dollars per Bitcoin. So let me break this down for you, family. Here's the headlines. Peter Schiff says Bitcoin could hit 10 million if this happens. It was also here. Could Bitcoin ever skyrocket to 10 million? Possible, but there is a condition, and I'm going to share with you the thread from Peter Schiff himself, but I think we're going to start right here. Economist and longtime Bitcoin critic Peter Shifty has felt vindicated over the past week as his warning that the Bitcoin price would fall victim to selling the news event after the recent launch of the first Bitcoin ETFs on the U.S. market has come to fruition, with Bitcoin seeing a pullback of 21% at its lowest point. But guess what? We've recovered and already bounced back pretty strong from that level, currently above 42. But anyways, uh, the Bitcoin experts who ridiculed me and anyone else who claimed the new Bitcoin ETFs would be a buy-the-rumor, sell-the-news event are now dismissing the significance of the decline, claiming it's just a classic buy-the-rumor, sell-the-news event that was to be expected, which is what he tweeted. So let's actually go to this tweet. No matter how low the price of Bitcoin falls, Peter Schiff says, its proponents will always be able to claim it outperformed gold. Duh, <laughs> because it has. For example, even if Bitcoin falls to $100 in 2031 and gold rises to 10,000, they will claim that Bitcoin is up 100x in the past 20 years, while gold is only up 5x. Sorry, uh, Peter, but it is what it is. What if Bitcoin goes to 10 million by 2031? Someone asked him, and here's where Peter chimed in. If the U.S. dollar goes away, of, uh, goes the way of the German, is that the paper mark? Then I suppose that is possible. So he's ultimately saying if there is a U.S. dollar crash, he can see that becoming a possibility. So despite the launch of the ETS, potential inflows that could follow, Schiff maintains his position. The Bitcoin will ultimately go to zero. Here's my prediction. And I've heard sailors say the same thing. Bitcoin is more likely to go to a million dollars per coin than go to zero. And I'll double up on that. Bitcoin is more likely to go to a hundred million dollars per coin. No, that's actually a hundred X, not a double up. But I believe Bitcoin is more likely to go to a hundred million dollars per coin, as Sailor has predicted himself, 
then go to zero. What do you guys think? So quoting him again, the new Bitcoin ETFs aren't creating additional demand, but merely shifting the demand, he said. Investors who might have bought the actual Bitcoin, Bitcoin-related equities like MSTR, MicroStrategy, or GBTC are simply buying the new ETFs instead. Rearranging the deck chairs won't stop the ship from sinking. Here is how Bitcoin works. We create something with no value, then artificially limit its supply. Then we all pretend it has value and buy it. Other people see the price going up and they buy it too. Then we all hodl and hoping everyone keeps pretending it has value, no matter how low the price goes. Again, this is the, the quote uh, of Bitcoin falling. Its proponents will always be able to claim it outperformed gold. For example, if Bitcoin falls to 100 bucks in 2031 and gold rises to 10,000, they'll claim Bitcoin's up 100x in the past 20 years while gold is only up 5x. Now, as I mentioned, that user did respond in which Peter Schiff gave us a scenario. So regarding that German paper mark national currency, Schiff was referring to the hyperinflation which occurred in Germany between 1921 and 1923. Three and uh, the German paper mark national currency plunged at the unprecedented rate. At one point, reaching an exchange rate of man. Is that four billion? Four billion two hundred million to one with the U.S. dollar. And while Schiff might have been uh, responding in jest, hyperinflation does indeed remain a risk as the U.S. debt, along with the debt of many nations around the world, is starting to increase exponentially. Data provided by uh, Use the Clock Org shows the U.S. national debt currently stands at thirty-four trillion. Good lord, an increase of more than one trillion since the end of quarter three of last year. And in January alone, the debt expanded from 33 trillion to 34.1 trillion and increased on 122 billion in 26 days. This is crazy. Now check out this chart. Has anyone else noticed uh, from the quarter four GDP report, annualized interest on the federal debt now exceeds one trillion and is projected to breach three trillion annualized rate by quarter four of 2030 insane and unsustainable. Look, this is the actual projection of where the debt is going. It's unprecedented. It means the dollar can't maintain its current level. I mean, that's why you have BRICS movements right now, which are doubling because they're anticipating the de-dollarization because they can't print to infinity. It has real world consequences and effects, and it's a way to tax the poor unfortunately. So the federal deficit currently stands at negative 6.4% of the GDP, meaning government expenditures significantly outweigh the revenues. This means the government will need to borrow more funds to make up the difference, further increasing the total debt. The matter has become so dire that it is one of the few things in the current political climate that has bipartisan appeal for Congress. I mean, pretty insane. I truly believe the debt can't be stopped at this point. Clearly, it can't be paid off. And that $33 trillion debt can eventually become $100 trillion debt. And quoting the high priest, the cold fact is that Bitcoin is not distributed, it is earned. I love that. That's actually a great quote. So shout out to uh, the high priest. But what are your thoughts on this uh, tweet from Peter Schiff and sharing the scenario of how Bitcoin can potentially hit that much money? Uh, do let me know, family.